One of the biggest questions that I've been getting for the last six months is not surprisingly, how do I get a remote job? So that's what we're gonna talk about today, just so we can clear some things up for you guys who may be potentially looking at a work from home position. Finding a remote job now is almost no different than what it was before when you were trying to find a job that you actually had a commute to. Nowadays, sites like Indeed, Monster, Dice, etc., they all have job postings for remote jobs. But there was actually a lot of websites that existed before all of this pandemic happened that actually catered to remote jobs. And I'm gonna give a list to you guys for those later on in this video. But now, just going on Indeed Monster, that could be a great start for you. But what is it that you need to know beforehand? What should you understand about remote work? Because it's a whole new ball game. It's not everything that it cracks up to be for sure, and we're gonna talk about that in these videos. But one of the important things that you should definitely understand is that not every single remote job is going to provide you equipment. Yes, I know, it sounds crazy, right? Like, you're gonna be hired to do a job and they may not provide you with your own equipment. Now, this happens actually very often because what would happen is you would give somebody remote access to remote into said facilities resources, right? So you could have your own computer and you could set up a VPN connection and remote directly into your work environment and do everything that you normally would from your own computer. Now that is something that could be done on any level. It could be an end user, it could be somebody in IT, it could be C-level, doesn't matter who that person is. You could all have the ability to remote into your uh, work site from anywhere in the world from any piece of equipment. Now, that's one thing to really keep note of is that if you have to use your own equipment, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the most reliable equipment that you can you know, purchase or that you could obtain because when you're re working remote, you need that reliability. So one of the things that you're often going to be asked to do is run a speed test to verify that you actually have the correct connection speed to help support remote resources. So making sure that your speed is up to par, if you will, so you guys can go run a speed test actually. You can just Google um, internet speed test and it'll pull up basically tons of sites where you can run uh, internet speed tests from. But there will be a certain threshold that many jobs are looking for. So now that you know how to find that speed test, when they ask for, hey, what's your internet speed? You can then tell them because that is going to be something that, again, is going to be a pretty hard requirement, as well as having your own computer. You may have to use your own computer, so make sure that computer is actually capable of running everything that you need to do, which is mostly a VPN software and remote desktop type of software so you can remote into other um, computers or other locations. So not too much is needed. The most important part is definitely going to be that internet connection. In reality, when you're just remoting into things, you can use any type of dummy, uh, dummy terminal, but having a good computer can also just help with doing any other types of um, tasks that you're uh, meant to do, whether that's kind of researching while you're remoted into somewhere. Um, you know, multitasking essentially is what we're getting at here. Having a decent computer is definitely going to help you with that. And another skill that we wanna make sure is at top level is communication. Yeah, we are going to be working from home for who knows how long at this point. And Many industries are actually shifting towards that as their normal. So having great communication skills is something that is really something that you can't not have. Like you actually have to have good communication skills because you will be doing a ton of remote meetings and you'll be doing a ton of emailing back and forth. And of course there's resources like Microsoft Teams and Discord and Slack where you build your, your internal community so that you can contact each other a lot more efficiently and easily and actually have longer conversations with people about projects that are happening, about issues that are happening, et cetera, et cetera. But making sure that your communication skills are on point is gonna be something that's gonna be hugely helpful for you. Now, how do you build your communication skills? Well, you just talk to people. Like, honestly, I know it probably sounds kind of silly, but just building conversation with people. Go out and join some Discord servers that have interests that you share and start communicating with those people. And there's even voice communication that you could utilize there. So even breaking out of your shell to talk to other people that can actually hear you is going to be helpful for you because of the fact that you need to learn to communicate with people you essentially don't even know. 
that can be awkward at times, but the more that you can practice that, like utilizing a Discord server, any Discord server, I'm not saying mine, we don't do a lot of voice communication over there, but there are a lot of other Discord servers out there and they have interests pretty much with every anything that you could be interested in, right? Whether that's gaming, whether that's uh, politics, whether that's whatever, it doesn't matter. There's so many different things over there that you guys can get involved in. Go check that out and start communicating with people because you need to learn how to do this. I promise you. Now, one of the barriers, of course, to working remotely is your experience. Now, if you are completely brand new to IT or completely brand new to the workforce, I should say, finding a remote job is going to be very difficult for you. However, if you have other experience in other professions or other careers that you've worked in, that is going to be greatly helpful for you. One, because of the communication. Two, just because of general overall experience. The point of that is it doesn't matter what your past experience is in. If you have customer service experience, you're gonna be golden because you are able to communicate with people and maybe because you show an interest to IT, maybe finding a remote job could be a little bit easier for you even if you have no prior IT experience. But I should make a huge note here and tell you guys that yes, if you don't have any IT experience, it is going to be much more difficult for you to find a remote job. Now, should you get discouraged by that? I mean, you're probably going to get discouraged by that, and I understand that. However, this is a completely different time that we're living in, and so many things are crazy right now. I see a lot of job postings for more entry-level remote work that actually require at least a year of experience, and Unfortunately, like I can somewhat understand that just with what is currently happening. It's a lot more difficult to train you when you're working remotely versus if you were working hands-on with somebody and shadowing them directly. It can be a lot more difficult to shadow somebody working remotely. There are, you know, obviously uh, remote screen sharing options that you guys can utilize out there and conferencing and stuff like that. It's not the same, but this might be the new normal, so we might have to get used to that as well. But don't be discouraged if you keep applying for remote jobs and you're not hearing back. They're definitely going to be very picky for the remote people that they will be hiring because of what is currently happening. So with some of this knocked out of the way, I don't wanna to take too long on this video because I actually have another one that's in the works that talks more about some other things with the remote working. You're probably wondering, well, where the heck do I even find these remote jobs outside of Dice and Indeed and Monster? There is a huge list. I'm gonna put it right here on the screen and I'll put it in the links in the description below so you guys can check out all these different websites that you can utilize to find remote work. Now, of course, there's also uh, freelancing options out there if you guys have any other tech skills or any skills that can directly relate to some of the freelance work posted on uh, sites like Upwork, Design Hill, Toptal, and these can help you just earn some income if you have the ability to do some of this freelance work that's out there. But again, please check out all the links that we posted in the description below for all these different job posting sites and freelance sites as well. And one thing to remember with all remote job postings or any job posting that exists, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. Make sure that you guys are doing your due diligence and looking up these companies. Now, you can go blindly applying to thousands of jobs at a time nowadays, but it's probably a good idea to make sure that you understand exactly what you're putting yourself into, even when you're going and applying for these jobs. Understand exactly what this company is about, what their mission is, and what they're doing, and see if that is actually going to work for you. You could look at sites like glassdoor.com so you can find people who have reviewed their work experiences working for those specific job locations and see what they have to say about them. Glassdoor can be a huge resource for you so you can know and understand what type of environment you're getting yourself into. Obviously, if an organization has a lot of bad reviews and you go in and see they have a lot of bad reviews from their IT team, might not be a good choice for you. So make sure you guys are doing your due diligence and researching everything that you can about these jobs. We're gonna have more videos talking about remote work, like the pains of remote work. What is the hardest thing about working remotely, which I deal with every single day? I get to talk about my actual personal experience with this one, and you guys will definitely wanna stay tuned for that one. So that's all we got for this video. It's just a quick one, it's been a while, but that's it, as always. 
Take it easy.